Okay, um, Charles is from France, so uh, he'll speak English as well. Um, thanks again from, like, how, did you, how long did it take from Paris? Um, a few hours, but I came with the like driving, that? yeah, so okay. I, I could make it uh, a little bit quicker. But thanks for having me here today, yep. and I'm very happy to meet all of you. Don't know if and you're uh, also a service provider, right? So everyone who sees this video yeah. or who's here yeah. can hire you to get professional services. Exactly. Uh, so yeah. I'm also providing services around ERP Next for mm -hmm. more than two years now. And, um, and I want also to, to show that it is possible to provide uh, services around ERP Next and contribute is to the project. Like do you only do ERP Next or is it a side gig? Uh, almost. Almost okay. uh, only ERP Next. We're yes. working on making that 100%. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, yeah, without further ado, thanks for being here. Your stage. So thanks, uh, Martin, for inviting me today. And uh, again, uh, guten Abend. Uh, I'm very happy to be here with you. Uh, so actually, uh, what I wanted to, to present you when uh, Martin asked me to, to talk uh, uh, tonight was um, a very basic process for almost all companies, uh, because I guess uh, all companies need to sell, <laughs> and they need to so uh, process the orders, they need to process payments, they need to send sell sales invoices, so very basic things, uh, which ERPNX, of course, can do greatly, but that we can also enhance thanks to the Frappe framework. So here I'm just talking about uh, what we can do with some customization as uh, um, Dominic just showed us, or also with the custom apps. And I hope in the future maybe we can do some of that uh, with basic customization also from within the, the UI. But that's up to Richard and the Frappe's team to, to decide. Um, I have had the agreement from uh, a uh, company I'm working with, uh, they are called uh, Devon Translations. They, they actually, as the name says, they are doing translation services around the world. So they are working mostly in France, in the UK, and in the US. Uh, and um, actually, they, they, they have a great team. Um, and they called me last, last year. Um, they just uh, uh, installed a new ERP uh, called ERP Next. And as uh, a service provider in France, they, they called me to, to help them, um, first of all, use the system and also improve it over time. And it's an ongoing process. So I'm just going to present you what we have done so far, or at least a small part of it. And But because we are working over all the areas of um, of uh, um, a company like uh, Devron Translations, um, but uh, they're they are actually uh, trying to use ERP Next and get most uh, the, the you know the, the most of it, out of it. Um, just to explain you what uh, Davon Translations was doing before they called me. So before that, they were working with a CRM called Insightly. So maybe some of you know that. Uh, they used it mostly as a CRM. So just for this, the, the first part of the sales process, uh, all the rest was handled manually. So what do they do? Actually, they just get contacted by people like you um, in B2C or in B2B. But in B2C, let's say you need uh, a translation of your birth certificate for uh, making any kind of paper uh, in, in France because you are from Germany and you need a translation from your birth certificate. You just send it to the Avron translations. They can, of course, med make the translation. If you need, they can also certify the translation, if it's for the for court order or something like that, um, and then they send it back to you, and uh, you can you can use it. Uh, they only start the transaction the, the transaction except for a few uh, use cases when they are paid by the user. Because in B two C, uh, people usually they will contact three or four or five different translation services. They will ask for a quotation. Based on the on the the quotation, they will decide to buy the, the service or not. Uh, but if you have, if pay, people don't pay you front, then you're never sure that they will pay you afterwards because maybe they, you know, they just forgot that they, they, they will not work with you and they went with another one or whatever. So in their process, they needed to have the payment up front. Uh, with that in mind, here is what actually any kind of ERP can do. And what ERPNext can do. It is an opinionated view, view because ERPNext is quite a 
flexible in the, the way you can handle things. But let's just say for, for the purpose of this case that uh, in your Pnext, you will first, in, in the first step of your sales process, you will ha establish a contact with someone, so you will create a lead. Uh, this lead will then create, like, lead to an opportunity. This opportunity will lead to a quotation. From the quotation, you will have a sales order. From the sales order, you, we, you will have either a payment or a sales invoice first, depending on the process, and the other one afterwards. And it does it, then you can start the, pro, the process, af, like, like the production process afterwards, or you can start the process in the middle. It depends to you. You can also, in your Opinex, skip the sales order part. You can skip the quotation part, go straight, straight to, the, to the sales invoice, and so on. But here, uh, let's say that th this is our... Uh, main process. So when Devon Translation started using ERP Next, um, what they did actually is what I would recommend to anybody, what I know Rochabs and the team are recommending to anybody, they used the standards. So they just implemented the standard. The first painful thing to do was to migrate all the data from Insightly into ERP Next. So that's, you know, that was uh, a big step for them. Uh, once they, migra they migrated all their data, they just uh, used the, the, so the standard uh, ERP Next uh, processes, which means that they were still receiving leads from uh, a, a form on their website where people could enter their information, their request. They were receiving the, the, so the, the, this, this by email, and they were creating a lead into ERP Next. So manually, someone got into ERP Next, created the lead. Uh, from this lead, they created an opportunity. So quite straightforward if you know your PNX to create an opportunity, but still you have to enter some data manually. So it means that someone has to spend a few minutes for each opportunity uh, to create it. And you, ca you can imagine that they have a kind, it's not a big volume, but they receive a few opportunities per hour. So it means that you have someone that is dedicated to this task all, the, all day long. Um, and then from this opportunity, they were creating a quotation. They had, had developed uh, previously a small application that allowed um, you know, the, the, the team to send the quotation with a link where people could pay. Uh, they could pay on, on a totally different website, just a payment page. When it was paid, it was quite kind of manual, but the the payment um, was the payment uh, uh, let's say um, uh, payment received was sent directly on Slack. If you don't know Slack, it's like a, a chat system that you can use, very useful uh, and very powerful. Also, you can receive notification within this uh, this application on different channels. So they had the channel for payment, payment France, payment UK, payment US. They were receiving an alert. On the, on the Slack chat saying someone has paid. Based on that, someone was coming back into the ERP, taking the quotation, going from quotation to uh, not sales order, but to uh, sales invoice directly, and recording a payment. So you can imagine kind of a good process, but can be also uh, time consuming. So they decided, okay, now we we start to, to know how to use ERP Next because it takes some time for a team, even if it's, a, it's, it's kind of a, an easy software to, to get your hands on. But in any case, it's still an ERP and people don't know everything about uh, the different processes there, so they have to learn it. So after some time, uh, they were quite confident and it was a pain for the business because they had to hire more people to handle the bigger uh, volume. So they decided to reuse the exact same process, but to automate some stuff uh, in there. So again, the idea uh, was not to change everything and you know do some custom uh, process that you know will fit their uh, need at one particular moment, but maybe in one or two years will not fit it anymore. They decided just to um, to use the standard process and skip everything that they were doing manually in each of the steps. So here, uh, for the leads, um, as I said, they had their website. It it's a simple WordPress uh, site where they had a form, so it's easy to create a form on web WordPress, sending an email. We decided to remove it and uh, create a page 
on the portal uh, or on the on the Frappe website. So for those of you who don't know, on on the Appinex and Frappe, you can create a website. Uh, it's quite easy to make a new page. It will need some kind of uh, HTML and CSS uh, development skills, but you can create new pages straight from the from the user interface. Uh, here in this case, we decided to go a little bit further, so we created it on a custom app, but the process is the same. We could have done it directly on the UI. It's just for uh, because we wanted also to implement some uh, Python logic behind it at the same time. So we did that on a, on a custom application. So we have, uh, and I will show you afterwards, uh, but we have a, um, a form on the, on the portal where customers can go, register uh, all their information in a structured manner, as uh, Dominic told you just before, uh, that's the, the main different bet difference between what you can have in an unstructured uh, document and in a structured do document is that with structured data, you can actually do something. <laughs> Whereas it's good to have an email, but you are quite limited. So we created this. When people register their, their quotation demand, it creates a new lead and automatically a new opportunity. So we skip the manual steps there. In the new opportunity, we were also able to add some custom fields for custom uh, things, like, for example, the target country. I was saying you need a, 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 a translation uh, for, for France because you are German, so you, you need to register the target country so that the people who are translate, translating it can know uh, for which country they need to make the translation. Um, and, uh, and, and so on. So the, the opportunity was created automatically with also a priority system. If you need the, the translation in the next uh, 24 hours, it's obvi obviously not the same as if you need it in five days. Uh, so from this opportunity, we decided to leave the process manual, at least for now, from opportunity to quotation. Why? Because um, most of their, of their requests will be changed uh, before they are processed. Uh, people are requesting for one birth certificate, but then they realize, ah, I need a copy of that, so it's not the same price because you need a copy. So uh, if it's certified or not certified, those kind of things. So here, they are still in the process of having feedbacks with the customers here, but they still create the quotation from your Next, And actually, here, uh, in terms of timing, of the time consumptions, uh, in the opportunity part, they were spending, I would say, a few minutes to create each opportunity. Um, and, of course, they could create a quotation directly. Now, to go from this part to this part, they just need to click on Make a Quotation. It creates the quotation with everything that is already, um, already in the opportunity. So we also added the items in the opportunity. We made a big, big uh, we spent a lot of time uh, refactoring all their items in the system because it's c something that is quite complicated for most companies when they start implementing an ERP in general, not just ERP Next, is understanding so well their business that they are able to uh, define uh, what they are selling or what they are purchasing in terms of uh, items, item templates and variants and stuff like that. So I won't go into details, but just to tell you that it took us quite, quite an amount of time to do that. So we were able to automatically uh, fetch the right items into the opportunity, so they just create the, the quotation. They send it to the customer. Uh, it's uh, actually uh, just a one click because we have those amazing email templates in, uh, in ERP Next. And the customer can actually click on a link and make the payment. And I will talk about the payment af just after that because we, we will see that. And from the payment, and that's the, the very nice thing, uh, I thought, Sorry. Up. From the payment, uh, they are able to, um, they, so the system will automatically create the sales order, the payment, the sales invoice, and for them to, to, to do actually uh, deliver the, the, the project, they need to create projects in Yopinex. They're working a lot with the project and the task and so on. Um, and the project, again, you know, it's, if you, if, you, if you think of it in terms of time, I was talking about a few, few seconds to create an opportunity. Uh, a project can take up to a minute, or two minutes to create a project, find the, you know, the right information to put in all the different fields. If you want to have you know, something that is uh, complete, 
the team was forgetting to fill in some fields. It was creating uh, inconsistencies in the in their project uh, in general, uh, because you cannot f put all the fields as mandatory. Of course, uh, sometimes it doesn't apply. But if you don't do that, then you know. People are, are, um, are in a hurry all day long, so they, they, they may just f uh, miss something and create the project anyway, and then you are missing some opportunity and some, uh, some information, and then when you need to build a client, you are still missing some information, or if you want to make some reporting, it's, it's an issue and so on. And, and of course, as I was saying, you know, if you can spend, uh, if you imagine you have, a, like, I don't know, they, they have a, maybe a 10 or 20 opportunities per hour, uh, if anybody spend like one minute creating a project, uh, you can imagine that, that at the end of the day you have someone working quite full time creating projects, which doesn't make sense if you can automate, automate that. So what did we do? I won't go into uh, technical details, of course, but we used three things. Uh, the ERPNX portal, the hooks, which is a term, technical term I will explain, and the API. Uh, the portal is, I, I, I'm calling the portal everything that is linked to the website, and the portal is uh, some, it's a part of the website where users, which are not registered ERPNX users, can still register, like your clients, your customers, your suppliers, and so on, and they can access a restricted part of the website where they can see, for example, their sales invoices, their quotations, and so on, and so on. So, Ha using the portals, we were able to. We created this uh, this new logging page because they needed additional information. We don't see it here, but we need the company name, we need the address straight away because we won't ask again to the to the customer. Uh, they need also, thanks to the GDPR, to validate <laughs> that they have read the terms and conditions and uh, receive agree to receive emails or not. That's you know standard stuff uh, for people to 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 register. So we we made this page. So when when uh, future customers, prospects, come in to their website, they sign up this form, and they can straight away make a, a request. And the request looks like that. So I just made a video to make it, <laughs> because showing you the system will take too much time. But uh, actually, they just fill in the form. It's a, it's a simple form. As you can see in, on, the, on the portal here, you have the different uh, options that they can access to. Um, they can pay if they, are, uh, they have uh, uh, current uh, quotations to pay. Uh, they can also see their sales invoices, see the advancement of their project, also, which is very useful for, for, um, for customers. Um, and they can also submit a new quotation request. So at this stage, as I was saying, it creates a new opportunity in the system, a new, a new lead, which has been created when they had uh, login. Um, and the team just has to look at, at the basic list of opportunities, see which ones are open and not uh, assigned to anybody, and they can start working on it. They can start making a quotation. Here we are on the other side of the, of the system, a new opportunity has been created. So you see we have a bunch of custom uh, fields, but nothing very, very fancy. The, the, I would say that the most complicated thing was uh, getting the, um, the items, as I, as I was saying before, all the, the items to be created in the system. They, they have, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, around 70 languages from and to to be translated, multiplied by the, n the number of documents you can have, birth certificate, uh, I don't know, uh, anything, you degree or whatever. Um, so you have to, to multiply that by 70 by 70. <laughs> so you can imagine the number of possibilities you have in terms of items. And if you make a mistake in creating the items, uh, it's, it takes a lot of time correcting it because you have to either uh, create a new item, but also put the right pricing uh, for, the, for this item. They have uh, different prices for not all, but most of the language combinations. So you can imagine uh, what that can lead to, but ERPNX is handling this very well, thanks also to the import system. So we, can, we create all the items and variants directly in ERPNX, but then we export everything, and we just re-import the price list where someone has done it on, on an Excel. And even in version 11, I think they don't even use the Excel anymore. They do that directly in a report, because you can edit uh, a report and, uh, and add some pricing directly in there. So 
it takes time, but it's really manageable. So here, the quotation has been sent to the, to the client. And now, they are, uh, if they click on the link, they're re uh, redirected uh, back to a payment page. That's an interesting point, because uh, although the rest is purely, um, uh, is purely on, a, on an app uh, that is for them, because you know, that's something that is very specific. If I, if I uh, uh, need to fetch uh, an item for certain languages based on the, on the target uh, translation country, I, I don't think a lot of you will be interested in that. But when we talked about the project, uh, there was two things they wanted. They actually were working with w one payment provider, which is Braintree. So for those of you who don't know, it's, uh, it's uh, like a, a credit card payment uh, platform, an API, where you can, um, you can just get um, this part from them, so this uh, small uh, UI widget from there, from them, and they just handle everything uh, from there uh, in terms of payment. And you, you get a response from their server saying the payment has been processed or not. Uh, you will tell me in the RP Next there is already PayPal, there is already Stripe, uh, Razor Pay also uh, I think in India. Um, why, why do we need Braintree? Uh, I would say why not? Uh, because they have all different pricing uh, based on your, the, the, ba the, the size of your, um, of your business. And also because that's the power of open source, uh, we needed Braintree because my clients were using Braintree for, for their business. So we decided to, uh, to develop it, but directly into the core. And we did that for Braintree, but we did that also for GoCardless. I don't know if you, you will see that um, on the other page, but uh, you have also the opportunity to pay uh, through uh, SIPA payments. And SIPA payments, you have two, two possibilities. You can do it manually. You can um, actually uh, register a mandate with your bank. Uh, you have to get the details and the paper over and so on and so on. It can take a few days. Or you can use a service like uh, GoCardless. They take like I think in the basic option, it's like 1% of the price, uh, up to 2 euro. So in maximum, you will pay 2 euro for, for, uh, for one payment. And they handle everything. So it's like if people paid by card. So it's amazing. I'm not making any adv advertisement for them. But I have to say, I'm quite amazed by the system because um, it's kind of cheap, especially if you have big, uh, big invoices. It's kind of cheap, and you can uh, you can then uh, integrate it within ERP Next. And the, the nice thing is that it, since we get the response from uh, GoCardless or, 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 or Braintree or anything, we can then uh, you know decide on the next action, we'll, which will be creating the payment, creating the sales invoice, sending the sales invoice to to the customer, of course, but also making the the project and so on. Um, by the way, uh, I told you before they were using uh, Slack in their previous, uh, in their previous manual, uh, manual system. Actually, uh, we decided also to implement Slack in there because they love Slack and it's really working well uh, in terms of alerts and notification. So each time a payment is created in there, they receive an alert on Slack, but not based on the, on the Braintree API because, you know, we could have done that. We could have just implemented something uh, completely different, uh, and and just made a, a link to Slack from there. No, we just use the standard notifications in ERP Next. So every time a new payment is created in ERP Next, it sends an alert on Slack, which is kind of uh, useful. And actually, they use it for way other stuff now than payments. And so the last part will be once the payment is um, is processed. This is what they see actually. So I made a, a fake project for Zybet Media <laughs> here. Uh, I have done anything else than just sending the quotation, the payment, has, the client has paid, and we have now from the sales order, which is now the, let's say, the, the basic document from where we can see all of our project, we can see our payment entry, our sales invoice, our project, and they know what, what is still to do if we had any problem with the payment, for example, and uh, they, they will sti still have a project generated, um, and uh, but they will see that it's still the project, the, um, the sales order is still to be invoiced uh, and to be delivered. And when it's delivered, they just have to create a delivery, um, a, 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 um, 
Um, so a uh, delivery um, uh, note to just finish the project and the sales order will be closed automatically. That is standard ERP Next. So just, just to give you an, an idea of what we can do, the next step for them, now that they have done it step by step, uh, is to do something a little bit better than the portal uh, form, which, you know, in terms of uh, user, uh, user experience is not great. It's working well, but it's not perfect. So we are not going to make something perfect yet, but we can do those kind of, uh, of things. That's what we are working on, is making a f another a full web application totally external to, to ERP Next that will be connected uh, to the API of ERP Next to, to, to do two things. First will be to uh, generate uh, the opportunity and the quotation, but also to fetch the price instantly based on the items that will be selected in there. So it will be like a, um, an instant quotation. So you just go in there, you select the different things you want, it fetches the price, proposes you different prices, you just adjust your, your quotation and you can submit it. And this is also uh, using like uh, very standard uh, ERP Next uh, with some uh, developments, of course, but the most developments in there will be the, you know, the, the web page itself, but not the interaction with ERP Next. And that is a great thing. Uh, because um, it can be useful to, to a lot of business to do those kind of things. And it's, it, you know, it's uh, similar to e-commerce, but uh, without having to, uh, to, uh, to you know, uh, re-put all your items and pricing and so on in a Magento or WooCommerce or whatever uh, other software are there, you manage everything from your Pinex centrally. And uh, that's, uh, I think it's very, very powerful. So I don't know if you have any questions about this uh, use case. Yes? Uh, what is this uh, written? Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, Dominic is asking me uh, in what uh, is this uh, web application written in. It's a pure React uh, JS. So it's, uh, it's, it's meant to be, uh, there, there, will, there, there is a basic uh, server, but uh, it's just meant to be a basic application fetching information. Uh, from the from the ERP Next API, um, we could have done something in, into uh, into the web page of ERP Next, but first, when we started that, uh, Vue.js was not implemented yet in ERP Next, which is the case now in version 11 and 12. Um, and uh, the other thing is that uh, it's it, it when you uh, when you make a very complete form uh, with a lot of options, it becomes quite a small application. So we wanted to make it completely outside, but could have been done. Um, thanks to Charles. We're back on track, like <laughs> you, uh, exactly. So I would ask uh, Gunnar Kurt to come up and be. Uh, thanks a lot for sharing this with us. Awesome. You're welcome.